Welcome to everyone. This is my first uh, Q and A session. See how it goes anyway. But uh, I've written everything down. Obviously, the names of questions and all, all that crap, uh, plus my answers, so I don't forget everything because I ain't got a good memory as it is. But I don't want to miss nothing now. Uh, first question was from Amina. Come and ask. I think it's from uh, Brum. Birmingham, if you're uh, foreign. She asked, any tips for growing sweet potatoes would be welcome. It was a uh, fail for me this year. Not enough sunlight when growing the uh, slips. So they took ages. Planted out too late and they didn't thrive in the ground either. When should I start them? Plant them, do they like full sun, full sun, shade, whatever. Right, these are a tropical plant meaning we don't get the, the heat they're used to, so we've got to help them out. Uh, that, plus they grow vertical. So if, you, if you're growing them in norm, normal ground, like a normal spud, if you put the fork underneath, you're going to go straight through the sweet potato because them growing like that, not flat like a normal tater. Uh, raised beds, you've got to grow them in or a potato sack or a bag, which uh, Wilco do sell them now, big, um, you can get them in Essien, but it's usually a, a material that uh, is supple, you have to grow them in them, meaning that is a raised bed, but I'm all raised beds and that's what I grow them in. I trialled these about six years ago, in the normal raised beds, I put them in, planted them in, um, 12 inches apart, 12 inches apart, rows of two feet. So I'm in raised bed, which is four foot wide, 26 foot long. I've got two rows in and staggered them. Uh, because I've got a good brew in the raised bed itself, I've got a decent crop out, but I still haven't got the heat. So then I put my brain into gear, I thought, right, next year. So at the end of the season, I top dress with manure and my own compost, as I do anyway. Give it a good soaking, and then I usually put a weed suppressant on. So nature then does the digging for me. That breaks down. Because you got the, the, the moisture and the warmth, I thought, well, if I do that straight through the growing season from your sweet spots anyway, let's try that. It's going to work. It's got to work. So the weed suppressant, Instead of using that for the growing meat, you can use that. You're still going to keep the moisture in. Instead of using that, I use black plastic, black and white horse cloth or plastic, black side up, meaning that kept in the heat when you put it white side up, that reflect the heat and light back onto the onto the plants. But that um, that kept in the moisture and the warmth, and when I come out to plant out. Started off in the greenhouse. Well, I'll give you them days later on. But when I planted out, I just put a cross through, opened the flaps up, and planted through there. And if you push them in deeper, so you got a bit of a wedge. When it does rain on the beds, whatever's coming them, that rain will go into the sweet tater and water them for you. Uh, <coughs> these are in the same family as convolvers or morning glory plant. The flowers are identical to a morning glory and the leaf. And they, they just shoot off, meaning when they get about six, seven foot long, just pinch out like a normal plant. But uh, look after them. Because there's so much to say about sweet spuds, just for you, I'm going to do this week or next week when I've got the time I'm going to do another YouTube blog just on growing sweet potatoes because then I can put the photos on which I use for me uh, me talks just on sweet potatoes because the photos are proof of the pudding they can explain better than me talking just about something if you've got a photo to look at you think ah oh, I sell and, and it's just proof it's being done but uh, I sow end of March, 
coal green out, just put them, if you get your sweet potato. Another thing I started off, when I started off, you could only get sweet potato slips, which is long, thin, bloody thing. That's a pain in the arrows to germinate. Now you can get plugs, meaning it's like a normal plug, a bedding plant. they just got a nice root ball on the bottom. Just plant them out in drinking cups. Then the next cup size up in a cold greenhouse. That's in the March cold greenhouse. One tuber per pot. Plant out in May. Then you'll be picking August, September. Uh, if you're on the internet, just put in um, sweet potatoes, sweet potato plugs, and that will give you all the catalogues or people, garden centres that are selling them. But most of them now, because they're getting a, a good, recognised veg, most of them are selling them the plugs. And they usually work out about a quid, £1.20 per plug. Which ain't bad because it'll give you a really good return. But watch me, YouTube, or sit on it, and you'll, you'll learn more from that. Uh, <coughs> fish blood and bone. That's what I used to feed with. A nice balanced, but uh, we'll go flog that. Um, mention that gump. That's about it on that one. Amina, I'll just answer your question. Next question, uh, John Adamson asked, thoughts on planting supermarket veg, i.e. garlic and spuds? Oh, I wouldn't, but, but, it, but if I would, it would only be those two that you've mentioned, garlic and spuds. Anything planted will grow to uh, eventually throw seed to survive. Obviously picking before it gets to that stage. I have saved my own spuds in the past and planted them out, but I didn't get as many spuds as if I had got a seed potato. Meaning, that's why they flog seed potatoes. With garlic, super supermarket garlic, I know a few people who, who have tried it, but would they get better stuff if they had it sent away? Or save their own garlic. I don't know. But uh, we'll go flog both, and that's cheap enough. So I like use there. So up to you. Do what you want. Trial, trial it. Uh, next one. Paul Parkin asked. Paul from Northumberland. The other two. They tell me where they come from. How do you mate? Question, I'm thinking about adding grow organic fertilizer to my compost bin or would a stronger source of nitrogen be better? Like sulfate of ammonia or blood meal organically based. Thanks for the volcanic rock dust tip from your videos. We'll be using it next year. Quick plug, plug for yourself there. PS from Paul, this is obviously. Also adding nettles and comfrey. Right. Don't waste your money. The main and best ingredient in a compost bin is manure. This is your best activator, which is nitrogen. There's your nitrogen. NPK of all manures have high nitrogen values. That's why it's good. Uh, rabbit is the strongest, then chicken. Now, that bloody shocked me. I would have said pigeon and chicken was the strongest. Then he rolled up. The more manure is used, the better. Straw is used, uh, which is a natural product. In most manures, and uh, this will break down, obviously. Biggest advantage uh, of, out of that lot, you will get your input of worms from your manure into your bins. Um, plug back to your question Paul you will get no better organic ingredient because I know you like to be organic so just use any menu and get on up plus on the end you say you new use uh, nettles and comfrey this is another good one both being full of nitrogen don't forget you can't put too much nitrogen so adding fertilizers, you don't need to. 
Uh, personally, my own weekly composting sesh, I use horse, goat, pigeon, rabbit, and alpaca muck. But uh, if, it's, if it's full of work, which well, my compost is full of worms anyway, then uh, they like it. If there's something wrong, the worms are telling you. Either you're putting too much in, you've put so much in they don't like, or you're not putting up enough of someone else. Lexi Duncan, next question. Asked, uh, try to cultivate potatoes, mow the lawn, planted Aaron pilot early in June, covered in old hay, best potatoes I've had. Good tip, well a question, but uh, don't matter. Thank you for that, Lexi. Next one, Liam Barry from Donegal in Ireland. How do you, Liam? Best method of utilizing horse manures. Best method of composting horse manure. Quickest way to make it usable. Expand on liquid runoff as an activator. Right, utilizing and composting horse manures. If in a bin, water it and then put a lid on. If in a pile, same again, water, well, then cover it. Both will warm up and start to break down. Got to keep them moist, exactly the same as your big leaf mold, whatever. Worms, bacteria, fungi, i.e. nature, will get to work. Liquid or smoke or the runoff, I have two containers, one in the greenhouse and one in the tunnel on the plot. A mugful a week goes into a bucket of rainwater, if you obviously get rainwater. Everything then fed in the greenhouse or the tunnel. It is an extra feed. It is only like us having a Mars bar, but it is a, a pick me up. It is something different. I also use a liquid feed to water after my chopped mixed ingredients have gone into my compost bin. So, uh, Basically, just keep it moist, put a lid on, and uh, that'll break down naturally. And the worms will, and the bacteria fungi will rapidly grow and get to work. Raunch Naquin, this is uh, Louisiana, USA. He's a good lad. He's been following me for years. I'm interested in why each of your compost ingredients was chosen. I'm currently collecting materials to try to duplicate what you do. I cannot locate some of the materials, so I will need to locate substitutes. Now the significance of each would help. Right, most of my ingredients are natural, meaning they're gonna break down. Plus, they're the ones I can get a hold of. Uh, somebody down Wales, there's loads of sheep, and get all the sheep muck. I can't. Another natural ingredient which I can't get a hold of is bracken. Well, I can get a hold of it, but I've got to go miles to go and get it. Plus, knowing my luck, I'll be collecting the bracken for somebody to be, I don't know, somebody's private bloody good or something. But it's, it's, all the natural ingredients you can get in your area. So uh, there's not really any um, duplicates. Uh, I mentioned earlier in the main ingredients is mine, which is nitrogen. This gives you worms, which you can use incorporate straw, which is used to soak up the urine. Ingredients which I can get, which are all good, i.e. most of them are natural anyway, and most of them are free, which you've got to go in. Leaf mould, that's, that's um, an easy one to get, Any, everybody can get that. Chicken manure, wood burner ash, I get this and uh, the timber hasn't been treated before it's gone in, so I know it's good stuff. Straw, another natural good ingredient, you know it's gonna break down. Worm casts, I'll get that for our training sheds, that's the good one. 
wood chip. Any wood chip you get, obviously, if I just chop the tree down, there ain't many trees that have been treated with whatever. So wood chip is ideal. And it is gonna break down, it is a natural product. And that's one of my ingredients now. I'm telling people if they're starting raised beds, because the hardest job with the raised bed is filling it, you're gonna put a good brew in. So I'll fill the bottom six inches with wood chip, because eventually that's gonna break down and drop. And by the time you planted some of it out after you filled it, them roots go down there and it's gone anyway. Sand, another good one. Sawdust, uh, wood shavings, anything like that, obviously from timber that hasn't been treated. But another natural product again, like wood chip, but it's in a different form, but it's still natural. Spent mushroom compost, I get that by the ton delivered, that's another good one. Spent hops from a brewery, also spent barley. Breweries have to get rid of this because it's, it's been used, it is spent. And our local breweries had to pay somebody to go and take it out of the road. But now all the garden clubs have had my talk, so they're all going down and just taking it. The brewers now just put it outside in bags and gardeners take it. The farmers are clicking on now as well and they're nicking it as a horse feed or to do the top dress their fields. So I spent off, excellent one. If you do get spent tops, all my fruit trees are top dressed 12 months of the year with spent tops. They love it. Basalt rock dust, I get that by the ton from our trading sheds as well, another good one. Volcanic rock dust, meaning it's from the centre of the earth, so it's uh, got trace elements and minerals which we ain't got up top. It is slow release, but it's a really good one. Um, you might mention that earlier on. Um, the way we get it, it's like granular, but if you did want to get it in a, a dust pour, just smash it up with a lump hammer or put it through some of a good grinder or something, then it'll be more of a dust. But that's another trial for somebody to do. Spent peat, that's out the grow bags I've used a lot this year for me, peppers, cucumbers, tomatoes, whatever, if I've used them. So the spent peat after that is another good one. Topsoil. The best top soiling it, molehills. I'll explain that a bit more because that is on a question later on. Seaweed. Um, I dry mine, it's surprising now quick it dries seaweed. If you get a nice sunny day, a couple of hours, it's dry, light out. Turn it over, dry the other side, then it goes crisp as a ferret. Then I put it through the shredder twice. Then it comes out chopped and shredded better. Go and get seaweed, like we can't. I've nearly run out now. But mate Gary's gonna bring me some from uh, South Wales. Oh, good lad, good lad. If you go and get seaweed, like if I had run out, then I'd use sea kelp tablets from all in the ballot or from any mineral place. I'll pack a muck, I've got a supplier of that. Spend coffee grounds, I've got a Tesco, but anybody that has, has got a calf flogs coffee they've been there spent coffee grounds i think it's starbucks they even bag it up for you and tell you it's free that put it on the bag but that is another natural ingredient obviously but everything you don't throw it in, in one big dog you mix it up with everything else then it is not so strong so spent coffee grounds as well goat muck and bracket which i mentioned uh that's that one So, Ron, I hope I've uh, answered your question there. If not, message me. Obviously, when this goes on the on YouTube, and uh, I'll sort it out that road. Jeff Davis, next uh, <coughs> questionnaire from South Wales. Hello, Jeff. Would you use clean molehill on uh, molehill earth on your plants, seedlings, or bung it in your compost bins? Boom, they like it. You have been watching my YouTube. Uh, plants, yes. Seedlings, no. Because seedlings are still trying to um, start off. And then they're young plants. They're not established. If they were established, yeah, I'd use. Um, 
because I'm using my own compost as a growing medium. Like if you're not, I don't like anybody else to, to mix a molehill with um, any compost. Yes, beautiful stuff. Uh, a molehill is riddled good, a riddled good soil. Uh, if you get molehills, it means it is excellent soil as it's full of worms. That's why the moles there is licking all the bloody worms. This is why I use it as one of my compost ingredients. One pinch of soil has millions of good bacteria, fungal filaments, protozoa, nematodes, and microorganisms. It is superb stuff. That's one pinch of soil you've got all them goodies in. So if you put a, like all my compost ingredients, all my bags, I put a double handful of everything in. So a double handful of a molehill as well. There's millions of good little chaps. Don't forget once these get mixed with something else and then you water it because obviously most things to get going have got to be moist. Then it'll just keep it warm and it will multiply rapidly and break down. That's these little chaps. It is nature working. The more you can work with nature, the better. I.e. once you've planted some of that or you know, don't disturb it. Don't dig at the end of the season. You dig and then you're killing the soil food where you're breaking nature's work out. It's gotta start again. So molehills, yes dear, superb but compost ingredients, but as for later on, if I was going to use it as a growing medium, in fact, now you've mentioned it, I'll do a trial later on. Obviously, if I'm pricking out a league of onion from a <coughs> five to a six inch pot, then I'll, I'll, I'll add a mole in as well. I'll do a trial, one with, one without. Cheers, Jeff. Right, Mitchell Carter from Old Hill, just down the road. Good lad. He's a new, just getting into gardening. He's one of my lads from Caslon Primary School. When I did the garden club there, he was one of the young ones in me in me garden club class. I did say how long ago he was. Was it 12, 15 years ago? Bloody Nora. But uh, it did work because he's brought back. Right, he asked, which manure is best for raised beds? Would you choose one over the other or use some of each of a larger variety? Right, any manure you can get hold of, except cat and dog, uh, is perfect. You want a good growing medium in the bed. Most manures have straw in, so that will break down. The more manures you can add, the better. Every manure has something in that all the manures doesn't have. That's why I use as many different manures as I can get my hands on. Uh, another question from Mitchell. Literally, I'm taking the urine. Uh, when would you start your onions in plastic drinking cups in the greenhouse? Right, if it was the onion sets, uh, obviously start them off when you get them. Well, it's overwintering onion sets, so these have been started off uh, probably a month ago or summer. And we'll go and just bring in their onions sets out now for the summer. So if I was to go down tomorrow and get some, I'll bring him back to the coal greenhouse. Throw my compost out and plant them now. <coughs> so onion sets can go in the coal greenhouse now. Onion seed, you need a propagator to start them off or some form of heat. But there's no rush with that. Um, unless you're going to exhibit them, then obviously you start off now or Christmas time. -ish. But the uh, end of February is early enough. Uh, even later than that for onion seed, but it's surprising how produce catches up when you get more sunlight and heat. Sunlight, well, both of them. Sunlight plants new ones. I see people, I hope you have enjoyed it and uh, learned some of it. And I'll say, I'm, I'm going to put a blog on about the sweet potatoes and because uh, the there's, there's bits out of me talks, which, which I do, like that one, sweet potatoes. I've got enough photos, so I can talk about that for about 20 minutes or something. And there's other things I can um, put on as well, different subjects, which is good for me. 
because I get more hits than is good for you, because I'm worthy. Because on some of the groups now on Facebook I'm on, uh, somebody's asking a question, and the answers that I'm getting, someone's like, oh, I've never done that before, but I think, but no, if you ain't bloody done it before, you ain't got a clue, so don't tell them. Because if you're telling them the wrong thing, and they do it and don't work, you might put them off guard in any road. Hope you've enjoyed it, people. Take care, and have a good Christmas.